Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of In the Word. Um, today, I wanted to talk about something that's been, uh, you know, very popular as of late. Um, you know, uh, some Christians are debating, you know, if Kanye West is saved. And I guess this is in light of, you know, all of the uh, recent videos of him, you know, having services himself and, you know, popping up you know, in other services around the country. Um, and the only reason why I wanted to kind of talk about this was, uh, first of all, you know, I've had some people that reached out to me um, and asked what my thoughts were on it. You know, uh, they sent me some videos. Um, and honestly, I only had watched, uh, you know, when I were when I was sent the videos, I only watched uh, the one when he was at New Birth. Um, so, you know, all the other church services that he may have had or been at other people's churches, I didn't really watch those. I just kind of watched that to just to get an idea of, you know, what was the big, you know, fuss and big thing that was going on when it came to, you know, Kanye West and, you know, now him, you know, saying that he's given his life to the Lord and things of this, and things of that nature. Um, one thing that I did do a lot of, though, is when I first seen, because even before I saw the video on Facebook, I just saw a lot of posts about Kanye West and, and a back and forth. And, I, and obviously I knew it had to do with, you know, him having the services and, you know, him, you know, saying that he is now saved. So I did read um, a bunch of comments in the post and saw a lot of people kind of debating back and forth, you know, some arguing to the point of, you know, uh, anger and things of that nature. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. Um, you know, share a couple of scriptures with you. Um, you know, uh, maybe I can shed some light on some of this and, and maybe encourage your heart and, and maybe, you know, shift the way that you may be looking at it or confirm the way that you may be looking at it. But, you know, you know, once again, we have Christians debating is Kanye West saved? And let me start off before I uh, read the first scripture. Let me start off by saying, honestly, you know, I don't know, you know, and I don't know if anybody really does. Um, it's probably too early. Um, to really tell, you know, where this man is in his salvation. So I'm not here to determine whether he's saved or not saved. In all honesty, I'm not going to go and follow Kanye West on Twitter or Instagram to see how many times he said Jesus today and what did he do today that wasn't Christ-like. I don't really have time for that. And I don't think any of us should be giving it that type of energy. Honestly, I think we should be praying for him. Um, I think that we should be trusting God for him and prayerfully, you know, that God is moving on his behalf and that, you know, he is coming or, or that he is already in, you know, the fold of Christ, that he's already in the body of Christ. But me personally, you know, I just don't have time to be doing that, you know, because, uh, you know, that's not what salvation is about. And I don't think that that's our job, you know, um, you know, God, works those things out as we go along. And, you know, I don't, I don't even want to get ahead of myself because these are some of the things I want to talk about. Uh, but the first scripture I wanted to share was second Corinthians five and 17. And the scripture says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So what it is saying is that when a person has given their life to Christ, when they are now uh, in Christ, they have become a new creature. Old things, the old life has passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I wanted to share this scripture first because what I saw a lot of that was very, very unfortunate is that what I saw people doing was going back to what he said previously, the things that he's done previously. And guess what? He's did some wild things. He's did some crazy things. He said some crazy things, you know, but my thing about it was, listen, when we came to Christ and we gave Christ our lives, God says, listen, this is where the new slate begins. All those old things you did in the past, that's done away with. So basically nobody has a right, especially if God isn't doing it, to bring up the old things that we have said and done and try to use that to measure if we are being sincere. Now, let me give you a couple of scriptures on how God handles this. Uh, Isaiah 38 and 17 talks about God throwing someone's sees, sins excuse me, behind his back. You know, so there's somebody that has been forgiven and God throws those sins behind his back so that he sees those sins no more. 
Uh, Hebrews 8 and 12 talks about him remembering our sins no more. Uh, Mike, Micah 7 and 19 talks about ga- uh, God casting our sins into the sea. You know, so basically, you know, these scriptures are showing that, listen, when we come to God and we give him our lives, God is not trying to uh, measure where we are with him now with what we've done in the past. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I just shared these scriptures to say, listen, who are we to uh, go back in this man's past after he said, listen, I've given my life to Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the Lord of my life. Who are we to go back and then say, but yo, you said this a year ago, or you did this five years ago. You said you sold your soul at this point and all of these, you know, all of these different things. Listen, all of those things might've been said, all of those things might've been done. But one thing I do know is that none of those are more powerful than the saving power of God. None of those uh, are more powerful than the blood of Jesus. So and anything that he's done, said, or whatever have you, listen, they're not strong enough or more powerful enough to stop God's salvation or his saving power. So I just wanted to make that point first that, listen, if you've been doing that, stop it. You know, we, we don't have that right. We didn't want anybody to do that to us. You know, I got saved when I was locked up in prison, you know, for doing some some things on the street that I had no business doing. I gave my life to Christ uh, in that prison service. And that was what, uh, 18 years ago. And I've been saved ever since. And guess what? Guess how I would have felt if every time I looked out of my cell door, the chaplain was right in my door looking to see what I've been doing since I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. How would I feel if, you know, every time I looked up, somebody was sliding something under my door, or what I previously did or what I did to be in there at that current time. Guess what? That's not right. That's not how you know, salvation is handled. That's not how we handle those that have come and given their life to Christ. But another scripture I wanted to share was Mark 10, uh, 17 through 27. And bear with me, it's going to be a few more minutes, but it's not going to be long. Mark 10, 17 verses going up to the 27 verse, it reads as follows. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So this is a young man coming saying, basically, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to live or inherit eternal life? And Jesus saith unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good, but one that is God. And we know that Jesus was God in the flesh. He is the word of God. He is God, the son. But he says, there is none but a good, but one that is God. And verse 19 says, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered the son unto him, this is the young man, master, all these things have I observed from my youth. So basically he's like, yes, these are all of the things that I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm, I'm in the right position. Uh, I've done everything that, that needs to be done to inherit eternal life. But listen to verse 21. And verse 21 is such a beautiful verse because it starts off by saying, then Jesus beholding him, loved him. And I think it's so important that the scripture let us know that Jesus beheld him. In other words, he looked on him and it let us know that he loved him so that we would understand what he's getting ready to tell him is out of love. And it is because he loved him. It says, then Jesus beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lack is just one. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. And I think this is very, very important because there there's another thing that I see. There's a theme that I see in a lot of these threads is what it is that Kanye should do at this point now that he has given Christ his life. You know, um, basically there, there's people that are writing lists out that he should do this. He should do that. He should get away from this one, this, that one. Listen, yes, without a shadow of a doubt, we see here that there is a huge sacrifice that we all 
have to make when we give Christ our life. There's places that we have to uh, uh, stay away from. There's people that we no longer can hang with. There's lifestyles that we have to give up. You know, so there is a huge sacrifice sometimes that that is money, that is possessions, maybe some of the things that we may currently have when we gave uh, uh, currently have when we gave Christ our life may have been some things that we got, you know, wrongfully like that Christ may say, listen, you need to get rid of that. Absolutely. There is a major sacrifice. But I think where we're going about wrong, where we're going about it. And I say we as you know, as I've seen Christians debating people that say that they're saved debating about this is that, listen, it's not up to you. In how he goes through this process, it will be God, it will be Jesus that will let him know what he needs to get rid of, if not all, who he needs to stay away from. But once again, it is a process, it isn't something that happens overnight, um, it, it's something that happens in time. I mean, if you've been saved any length of time, like I've been saved, and you remember that early process of being saved, listen, we didn't just jump up and necessarily get rid of everything right away. You may have a few that have that testimony, but it was rare that we got everything right and got away from everybody that we needed to, especially those of us that was in a relationship with somebody that was in the world. Let's say if we got saved and we got saved in the midst of being in a relationship with someone, that's one of the hardest things to or, or, or uh, to let go. That's one of the hardest things to do is to separate from somebody that you've been having a relationship that you might love and that you have may have been having sex with because we know how that tie and how that bond is. So guess what? God gives us grace. He leads us through the process. He talks us through. And this in this case, we see that it was an immediate thing. And, and I think that's what people are going on. But guess what? Everything is case by case. We don't know how God is dealing with this man or what he's telling him to do. So we can't say that this in, this individual, what we've seen in scripture, that's exactly what he's telling Kanye to do. Because if that's the case, then why he didn't tell all of us to do that? And, and maybe he did. And maybe we struggled with it. But guess what? He had grace. You know, he, he showed us mercy. He walked us along and helped us through it. You know, but one thing I see here. That is so beautiful about God is that God didn't chase him down. You know, God doesn't try to make us give up these things. God don't try to forcefully, you know, make us give up the things that we don't want to give up because God understands if we don't willfully give these things up, if we don't willfully lay these things down and follow them later on, they're going to become a hindrance. Amen. And that's probably what happened in a lot of our lives. He probably did tell us to immediately drop some things and we, you know, we just wasn't ready to truly follow then. And guess what? He let us went and did what we had to do. But listen, he didn't let us go. He didn't forget about us. And now today we have the testimony. We no longer have those things in our life. Those things no longer hold us hostage. You know what I mean? We're free from those things. And guess what? We're still in Christ because of his mercy and his grace. But listen, the scripture goes on and says, and Jesus looked round about, like I said, and saith unto his disciples, like I said, they, he didn't chase him down. They, they went the other way and started talking about this situation. It says, and Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth again, listen, he's going to clarify it, and said unto them, children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? So he clarified it like, listen, how hard is it for them that trust in their riches? Because this is what we see with this young man. Obviously, he trusted in those riches to the point of where he could not give them up and and have treasures in heaven and follow Christ. So he says, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? So the disciples are blown away like, well, man, well, who could be saved? Listen to Jesus' response. And Jesus looking upon them saith with me, Men, it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. So what he said to them is that no matter how hard it looks when it comes to somebody being saved or the lifestyle that they are living, with you it is impossible. And that's why you shouldn't be in the way. That's why you shouldn't be trying to determine what a person should do and what they shouldn't do. With me, all things are possible. No matter how bad a person's life is, like I said, I was out selling drugs, ripping and running, getting high, 
just wilding. But guess what? God, you saved me. He changed my life, even though people said that I would end up dead early, that I would never be nothing. Here I am preaching the gospel, saved, married with three children, been married for 10 years, faithful for 10 years. This is the type of God we serve. And this is what he's saying. Listen, I know this guy looks like he's out of control and there's no hope for him, but watch what I can do. But the problem is, is when we are in the way and we're trying to play God in these individual lives and what blows me away about this and what's so powerful about this and what blows me away about us as Christians and the Christian churches. Why is it that when somebody that is is an entertainer, a politician, somebody that's rich or famous, when they start to claim Jesus is Lord, why is it that we go crazy? Like this is this is a one in a a lifetime chance. This is a one in a million thing. (laughs) Listen, with God, all things are possible. When we think about the lives we came from, listen, I was living a crazy life. I met guys in jail that were in there for murder that sincerely serve God now and you see the fruit of it. So why is it when these entertainers and these different people get saved. We act like some major thing has happened. Like this is this is almost the impossible. We got to hurry up and run and grab them and bring them into church and just let them do this or do that. And no, listen, this. This is with God. Anybody could be saved. We look at Paul. Paul, the one that wrote a third of the New Testament that we read out of his scriptures even now. He was killing people in the Christian church. He was killing followers of Christ. And Christ turned his life around, saved them, and and caused him to write a third of the New Testament. A lot of the scriptures that we preach out of to this day. So why is it that we get all crazy and, and all out of our mind when these celebrities claim that Jesus is Lord or they claim that, listen, I now have given my life to Christ. Why don't we allow them to just go through that process? Why we got to put all this pressure on and why we feel we got to run and try to take them under our wing. No, let listen, let God help them to work out what it is that he is trying to get them to work out. Let him lead them to the place of where they need to worship and hear the word. Let him help them to get to the place where he want to be. Listen, we got to stop doing that, man. Nothing's too hard for God. To me, sometimes that's a slap in the face to God when we react in that manner, you know? So I, I just wanted to make that point. Like, listen, we got to stop when somebody that that's famous or an entertainer or a rich person start to talk about, you know, God is dealing with them. Jesus Christ is dealing with them and that they, that, you know, they have given, you know, him their life. Listen, we got to stop going sick. Like this is, you know, like this, this is a, a unbelievable or unimaginable thing. Listen, they are human beings just like me and you. Basically what it is when we see these entertainers or famous people, rich people, a lot of them just went harder at their gift than some of us did. It doesn't make them different from us. They're not you know, higher than us or above us. They have issues, um, mental, physical, spiritual, the same way we do. So we need to stop doing that. And the last point I wanted to make, last scripture I wanted to uh, talk about was Philippians 2, 12 and 13. And I'm going to close here. The scripture says, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. And once again, this is the brother Paul that we was talking about that was killing, you know, those uh, 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 that were followers of Christ. He says, but now much more in my absence. Listen to what he says. Listen to his advice. And this is his advice to us today. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So Paul says, listen, work out your own salvation. The word work out means exertion or effort directed to produce or accomplish something, labor or toil. The word salvation is deliverance from sin and from the penalties of sin, redemption, a saving or being saved from danger, evil, difficulty, destruction. And that's what he did. He saved us from destruction um, to rescue. So what is Paul saying here? He says, listen, work out your own salvation. Listen, God saved you. So what is it should, that we should be working to exertion towards? Towards doing God's will. If God saved you, your major focus should be laboring and toiling to do everything that it is that he told you to do or that he is telling you to do. That should be our focus 
We shouldn't have time to be trying to figure out if a man is saved or not, if he's sincere or not, if he's being real with God or not. We shouldn't be following behind him, watching his IG and his Twitter to see if he cussed today. Listen, there's a process when it comes to salvation that we all went through. I, I challenge you today. Think about the process you went through. Amen. And 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 think about how you would have felt if everybody, you know, had the way that you uh, uh, acted or reacted after you got saved under a microscope. Listen, I'm working on my own salvation. I'm striving to do God's will every day to the fullest. And some days I miss it and some days I do well. But listen, we know that it is a constant job to stay in his word, to stay in prayer, to do the things that he called us to do. Listen, it's such a job. It's, it's, we ain't got time to be worried about somebody else. We should be worried in the sense of praying for this brother and believing that God is going to continue to deal with him and that whatever God tells him to let go, that he does it and that he follows Christ wholeheartedly. That should be what we should be focused on. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today. I know it was a little bit and I hope some of you made it to the end. Um, and I just encourage you, listen, let's just continue to pray, pray for this brother. Let's just continue to believe God for him and believe for those that are watching him, that are close to him, that it may be, you know, that, that some light may be shining on them, that they may be thinking about their own lives and the changes that need to be made. But at the same time, as we are doing this, listen, let's listen, let's work out our own salvation. Let's strive and focus to continue to go hard at the will of God for our own lives. Because listen what the scripture says. At the end, it says, for it is God, which worketh in both in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So it is God constantly working in us to help us to accomplish the purpose that we need to accomplish. So that right there lets us know that we don't even have the right or the ability to be judging somebody else or or just constantly on somebody else back about what they're doing and what they're not doing. Listen, this thing is fixed, man. God has it in a way that he is is involved in our lives so much and helping us so much that, you know, it's almost impossible not to make it home if we strive to do what it is that he's called us to do. It is him working this thing out. It's all about him. This is not about us and us being better than anybody else. But guys, know that I love you. I appreciate you sitting with me, hearing me out, listening to this. And listen, we're going to continue to pray for this brother and all of those that are around him, all of those that are being touched by Christ. We just continually will pray for them, you know, that they will, you know, uh, experience experience Christ to his fullest and, and, and have eternal life, you know, and, and be on that path. So guys, I love you. Don't forget to uh, click uh, the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Listen, if this was encouraging to you, um, please share it with somebody else. If you've been having this conversation with them and you felt like this shed it a little bit of light on some of uh, the things that's being talked about around this topic, around Kanye West, please share it with them. And listen, I invite your thoughts and your comments. I truly appreciate that. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say. I love you guys. And until the next time, Shalom.